Hello, in this video we're going to show how to prove that two quadratic forms are independent. And I call it another proof because I have a video on independence of quadratic forms and how to show they're independent. It's actually the same approach, but we prove it differently in this video, which I think is pretty clever. And that's why I wanted to present it. Let's let y be a multivariate normal with mean vector mu and sigma. Sigma is positive definite. Let A be an, an N by N symmetric matrix, and let B be something by N. So M by N matrix, and if this matrix product is zero, then the quadratic form YAY is independent of BY. Now, the proof goes like this. So the covariance of BY and AY is this it's b times the it's actually the covariance of y and y which is the variance of y and you have to transpose that a out back here and then this was the variance of y is sigma but since a is symmetric we just get this now if b sigma a is zero then we know by is independent of a y and i just put out a video on that called uh you know, normal random variables, covariance zero, and independent e or equal, or something like that. I actually haven't titled it yet. I just created it. I just need to upload it to Facebook, to YouTube. Note that the functions of independent variables are independent. Okay, so this quantity here, the A can be written like this, where A dash is a generalized inverse matrix. And I have a video called generalized inverse matrices. And then we can uh, take sort of undo the transpose there. Remember A is symmetric. So that's A, the generalized inverse of A, and this is A, uh, Y. Now note that, so this quadratic form is actually a function of A, Y. And, and you can see it like this. And of course, A is the generalized inverse matrix. So thus, if this is zero, then these two quantities are independent, right? Because by is independent of ay, and it's also independent of functions of ay, so these two are independent, and that's the proof. Now, one more proof. Let's let y be multivariate normal, mean vector mu and sigma covariance matrix. Let a and b both be symmetric, and if this quantity is zero, then these two quadratic forms are zero. And note from theorem one that if this is zero, then we know AY is independent of BY. And so this implies that a function of AY is independent of a function of BY, where A and B dash are the generalized inverses of A and B. But since this function of AY actually is the quadratic form yay, right? So we just undo it like we did in the first proof. And this function of by, when undone, is actually just the quadratic form yby. So that implies y, this quadratic form is independent of this quadratic form. And then we're finished. Now, as a very neat example, we're going to prove that the mean and the variance are independent when we have normal variables. And, that I, and I say another proof, because this will be the third proof that I show where the sample mean and variance are independent. We have normal random variables. But this one, we're going to use uh, matrix notation to prove it. So let's let y be id normal random variables mean mu and sigma squared. This is from 1 to n. Now if we put it in matrix form, so this is a vector of y's, it's multivariate normal with mean mu and um, sigma squared i. Now let's let 1 be a vector of 1. So this is an n by 1 vector of 1's. And we're going to let J be this matrix product. 
But note that this inner product is n to the inverse, so that's 1 over n, and it can be taken out front. And then the matrix product here, or the vector product 1 and 1, creates a matrix, an n by n matrix of all 1s. And then 1 over n times it creates a constant vector where each entry is 1 over n. And now this is going to be the background, backbone of our derivations here. So the mean, remember that's the sum of the y's divided by n, can be written like this in matrix form. So this is a matrix, you know, y1, y2, all the way to yn, and this is a vector of 1's. And when you do this product, you get the sum of the y's divided by n. So that is the sample mean. Now here, j times y, where j is this, um, we get this. So uh, I'm using this form of j, right? And this is y. Now this here, the sum, or the 1 times y, that creates the sum of the y's, right? It's a constant. So it can be taken out front, divided by n, and we get, um, we get y bar. So j y is y bar one so this is a it's a constant vector of the sample mean so it's y bar y bar y bar there's n of them okay and i do that because it helps us write the sample variance in matrix notation so it's one over n minus one the sum of y i minus y bar squared now to write this in matrix notation we create vectors of size n. Now this is transpose, so technically it's a row vector. So y1 minus y bar, and when you do this, you, you take it times this one, right? So we get one squared, and then it's added to the next one. So y2 minus y bar, y2 minus y bar, you get plus y bar squared, and you go all the way down. So this vector multiplication is the sample variance. But technically, I guess it should have a 1 over n minus 1 out front. So I forgot that. Then, right, but think about this. So this right here, you could think of it as a vector of the vector of y. And then minus right there. And then the, a constant vector of y bar we just said was jy, that's this. And then don't forget the transpose. And this right here is y minus jy. Well, look, there's a y common in both of those and a y common in there. So this, let's right factor it out, right? That's what we get here. When that's multiplied into it in the same way here, we get this back. Now let's take this transpose in to that and we get this. Now, we could take the transpose into both of those, and this is symmetric, and J is symmetric, right? So if you transpose this, you end up getting it back. So that's symmetric. So we can take the tick off of it. And then this times this, it's actually idempotent. So one of them goes away, and we're left with this. And this is the sample variance written in matrix notation. And, that, and, this, and again, because this is idempotent. And, um, and I'm going to leave that as a proof to you to prove when you multiply this out. And the way you do it is I times I, I times J, J times I, and J times J. And then it's easy to show that J times J, written in this form, is idempotent also, and you get J back which then it all reduces to, to this. So now to show that the sample mean and the sample variance are independent, we just need the, the matrix part in front of the Y's. And here we need this, the, this matrix in the quadratic form. So let's multiply them. This is that matrix in front of the Y and the mean vector. And this is the matrix in quadratic form that we just proved. So these are constant and we pulled out front and now we're taking this times this. But now look, so one transpose times i is just one transpose. 
1 times j. So this is the 1, and then j was written like this. So it's 1, 1 transpose 1, inverse 1. But this right here, 1 transpose 1, and 1 transpose 1 inverse, that creates the identity matrix, leaving just one, um, one transpose. So it left this. So we have 1, and then all this created 1 transpose. But that is 0 when you take the difference. And so this product is 0, and that implies that the sample mean and the sample variance are independent, right? Written, this is matrix form, they're independent. And that's a third proof that we have on, on this channel. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that, I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.